Last year, the Des Moines Waterworks sued 10 drainage districts in three northwest Iowa counties in federal court, claiming the region's extensive farm drain tile system increases nitrate runoff and is polluting the primary drinking water supply for over half a million central Iowans. Ultimately, we think that this is an externality from corn and soybean and agricultural production upstream that's being pushed to our customers. Bill Stowe, who heads up Des Moines Waterworks, has drawn the ire of many in Iowa's agricultural community. However, local media polls show consistent public support for the utility's attempt to revisit long-standing environmental law. Basically, there are two categories of claims here. One of them is our federal claims under the Clean Water Act that the drainage districts are point source polluters. And that's a federal claim that really looks forward to regulation in the future. Then we have a number of claims that are based on damages. Many of those come under Iowa law. If I got private entities, should not be able to do that. Attorneys for the accused drainage districts in Sac, Calhoun, and Buena Vista counties say districts are able to renovate tiling systems incrementally to help boost agricultural performance, but are immune from legal challenges under Iowa law. The landowners within the district are the ones who determine whether an improvement will be made. The trustees don't have the authority to do anything on their own. They can't mandate cover crops, they can't mandate biofilters, they can't mandate filter strips, they can't mandate waterways. State government has proposed several ways to throw money at water quality during the current legislative session, but so far nothing has stuck. Critics counter voluntary efforts, like the state's 2013 nutrient reduction strategy, lacks accountability, and is too little, too late. But states have held higher standards than those coming down from Washington, D.C., like California's past guidelines on emissions. This has been the law for 40 years, but neither Congress or the Iowa legislature has seen fit to do the very thing you suggest. And there's a reason for that. The system works as it is right now. The district's lawyers further claim the lawsuit puts them in the precarious position of litigating laws which aren't on the books. Back in January, the original federal judge sent some of Waterworks' legal assertions to the Iowa Supreme Court for clarification. And while the state's high court has yet to respond, the defense team recently filed a memorandum which could dismiss the remaining federal counts. Farmers don't have to ask permission to put in a drain tile, and they certainly don't all the time. And in the past, it's my experience that no map was ever kept of the location, the depth, or the size of the tile. Officials with Des Moines Waterworks contend defendants, currently considered non-point source polluters, foul groundwater and should be treated as if they were industrial point source polluters. Every landowner inside a drainage district has a right to hook on to the d district facilities. So potentially every few hundred feet, every one of these tile lines that's shown on this county plat has private tile hooked to it. Corn Belt water treatment facilities have dealt with high nitrates for decades. And Iowa's capital city took steps to comply with federal guidelines long before Stowe's tenure by constructing a $4.1 million nitrate removal facility in 1990. In 2015, the utility ran the plant for a record 177 days and spent $1.5 million removing nitrates from surface waters it captures from the nearby Raccoon River. Our larger concern isn't the operating costs, it's the fact that we have to run it that often, we're essentially running it into the ground, literally. Des Moines Waterworks has long held the necessary federal permit to dispose of the nitrates it removes for customers back into local waterways, a bone of contention among some members of the farming community. The board that I work for has made very clear that we want to be leaders in environmental protection, not simply living by the letter of the law to go beyond that. For many years, folks have gotten caught up on the idea that we have put nitrates back into the river. Just beyond the utility, the Raccoon River empties into the Des Moines River, 
a secondary source of metro area drinking water. Next downstream, Ottumwa Water and Hydro draws on the river for hydroelectric power and drinking water. Water is pumped to a reservoir when nitrate levels are low to dilute supplies when contaminants spike. General Manager Michael Heffernan says nitrates are a growing concern, but the watershed is the culprit. Some people were questioning how the impact of uh, them dumping the nitrates back in the river affected us, and which is virtually none because they're just returning the nitrates they removed. They're not adding to the nitrate problems. Heffernan says Ottumwa's nitrate readings often come in low compared to Des Moines. And he attributes the difference to natural denitrification processes where nutrients are released into the atmosphere, completing the complicated nitrogen cycle. That is four-tenths of one percent. Citing a Tufts University hydrologist, members of the defense team believe a similar theory holds true upstream. They maintain the 150 plus river miles that separate them from their accuser allows for multiple dilution and natural denitrification opportunities, along with urban runoff. There's less than four tenths of one percent of Sac County nitrates that get to Des Moines. We have an expert that so testifies, and Des Moines Water Works has no evidence to contradict that. If legal wrangling doesn't dismiss or delay the unprecedented case, trial is set for August in Sioux City. For Market to Market, I'm Josh Bittner.